Second story, and it should be the answer to my second question, what are new songs? Now, new songs, they, are, they can be broadly categorized. There can be three types of songs that we sing in church. One is the, the songs that we use to rejoice and celebrate, as we did tonight, rejoicing, songs of rejoicing. Then there is another group that I call songs of intimacy that lead us to be close to God. And then for me, there, there is a third group of songs, songs of deeper worship, songs that take us deeper. And let me tell you this story. There was a time in particular in, one, in my previous church, Paya Leba Methodist Church, when I was leading worship one Tuesday evening during our Tuesday evening prayer meeting. I was just leading with the guitar alone and just playing. And the next song, as we were going further and deeper, the next song was called Deeper in Love. And I, as I was praying and planning about for the worship, I felt that that was right. You know, we're going deeper, so deeper in love is just the right song. And so I was just getting ready. We were going deeper. And then I was supposed to play deeper in love. And suddenly at that moment, I felt it was all wrong. Because the song was too beautiful. It was too melodic. It was a song for the place of intimacy. At, at that point, I, I had a thought, and I want to share that with you. The thought is this. When the song is too beautiful, the attention is now on the music, is on the melody. The words become, fall, fade into the background. The melody comes into the foreground. And immediately at that time, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go there. And then the Lord placed this old song from Maranatha music into my heart. And I started singing, Come near with me. Come near with me. Between the wings of the cherubim. Come near with me. And everybody kind of knew the song or found it familiar. And immediately could just shut out everything, including what's on the screen. Because there was nothing on the screen at the time. Because the song was not prepared for the night. And as we shut out, we started to focus on the Lord. A familiar tune, simple words, simple tune, relatively monotonous, that took us deeper. My prayer is that as we encourage people to write songs, that people will start to write more and more songs that will take us deeper. Not just more happening riff more happening music because yes there's a place for that for one of those the, the other two categories but I think I, I from my observation what is greatly lacking is songs of this third category born in the deeper place of worship there could be songs that lead us deeper there could be songs that take us out of that deeper experience and there are songs like that that's what the new songs I pray maybe the third question, what is indie worship, what, is new, what are new songs? And the third question, what is the vision? The vision is this, is to see a Catholic church singing a song written by a Presbyterian. Possible? To see a Baptist church singing a song written by an Assembly of God church member. To see an Assembly of God church singing a Methodist song. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> For Singapore, sorry. It's a different song. To see a Methodist church singing an independent church song, as we have done so tonight. This is the Methodist church. That's the vision. But what are connected to that vision? What does it take for that to happen? You see, a lot of songs are birthed in churches already today. But you know what? They are all songs that are sung only by themselves. All right? I don't even have to name the churches. Huh? You know, a particular church, they produce album CDs. Only their members know the songs. Their thousands know the song, but the rest of the Christendom in Singapore, we don't sing their songs. And then another church produces another album, and they sing, and they're all excited about it. The rest of us don't really sing. Maybe there are some pockets that sing a few, but they're not generally embraced. Everyone seems to want to go global with integrity music. All right? But yet, locally, we don't embrace ourselves. We don't embrace that. The vision then is for us to embrace ourselves. You know, every 
the songwriters from the UK or from Australia, from US, before their songs made it globally, they made it locally first. They were encouraged at the local level. They were supported at the local level. They were loved and sung and given a chance at the local level. There's a popular saying in Singapore, you want to make it big in Singapore, make it big overseas. Then you come back, we will see you very high. Then you can be a bit atasikit. Right? All Peranakan say, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the problem. and There is this problem and we have to, as a local body of believers, first embrace these songs. And that's what we're doing. We, every quarter, we want to share some songs and we want to encourage the local churches to embrace them. Give them a chance. Let me tell you one last story. The last story is very simply this. When I buy a CD, I think maybe you too, whenever you buy a CD, even though it may be coming from Planet Shakers or Hillsong United, so from Planet Shakers, I didn't even like the title song. I mean, I like some of the other songs, especially the one with the rap. You know? So some songs really stand out right from the start, but some songs don't. But you know, as I listen to it more and more, and more because I've already paid money. <laughs> Secondly, it's Planet Shakers. It's got to be good. How come not good? Let me hear it out, oh, hear it, and really hear, ah, kena. Right? And then, ah, you appreciate. And then suddenly, some Ertan use it in Christ Methodist Church worship. And then someone else, Doris, uses it for worship. And then suddenly, the song even stands out further. The, you know, the first time I heard One Way Jesus. Pastor Raymond Sim came back from Hillsong Conference fully enthusiastic. One way, Jesus, and all that. You, so those of you who know him, you know he can sing without a mic. <laughs> and I was sitting there, I thought that was the lamest song on earth. Okay, I grew up on One Way Ticket. <laughs> and now I'm hearing One Way, Jesus. You know, I couldn't handle it. But the more I hear the song, because young people dig it, right? You know, I was a chaplain at ACJC. Every chapel, every Monday, they sing One Way Jesus. So often, and I, I like it. The more I, I worship God with it, the more I understood the passion behind the song. And then I found myself jumping to One Way Jesus and leading One Way Jesus subsequently. Now, I believe, okay, that's the story. But the vision is this, that local churches need to love, need to embrace what God has given us. We need to be good stewards of what God has given us. Embrace it, use it, and watch what God will do when the Singapore church embraces the songs God gives the Singapore body of Christ. Amen.